Hey folks, how's it going? My name, as uh, Dan and Andrew said, uh, my name is Kelly Sutton. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Layer Vault. Uh, you guys probably know us for something called uh, Designer News, which is just Hacker News, but blue and for designers. Uh, show of hands, uh, how many people read Designer News? Ooh, we gotta get, yeah, we gotta up our, uh, up our growth hacking game there. Um, well, so for those of you that don't know, uh, Designer News is basically the uh, trade publication for uh, web and graphic designers. It's very similar to uh, just other linked list formats that you see out there. Uh, we decided to create it out of an, uh, our own personal need. Uh, we were sitting around a few years ago, decided we were spending too much time reading Hacker News, and we thought, why don't we make something for designers? We put it online December 31st, uh, 2012, and then by the time we woke up uh, on New Year's Day, we already had 100 users and we were off to the races. It was, uh, for the most part, self-sustaining. Um, I actually didn't include a screenshot in here, but you can go to the site uh, news.layervault.com, linked list, uh, vote on some stories, see what people are talking about. Um, and I wanted to give this talk, uh, we've given similar ones in the past, but I wanted to give a little talk about some of the decisions that have gone into uh, building designer news, both uh, purposeful decisions and also decisions that were kind of just uh, these what if statements that turned out to be a big gamble and broke all the rules but had some pretty good, uh, some pretty good payoffs. To kind of give you a sense of how much time uh, we're wasting uh, of designers out there. Uh, about 200,000 designers read designer news every month. Uh, and the average designer news reader will check the site at least 10 times a day. So it's Facebook, Twitter, designer news. Uh, our company also coined the term flat design, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I'm, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, building a tool for, or building really a, a community for designers and some of the uh, not so obvious things that might go into that. Um, a lot of folks will always talk about artificial constraints. Um, I think artificial constraints are a very healthy thing to build into every project, especially when uh, the projects are very new and you don't have, uh, or the sky's the limit, right? Uh, you will almost be, you will definitely paralyze yourself by choice if you don't build in just a few constraints. Um, so we built in a few into designer news, and I have the wisdom now of, of sitting here two years ago. Uh, I could have said these were, I, I could be standing up here saying these were all total failures, but these were the things that worked for us and for our audience. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that you have to do, uh, I guess, with anything that's, that's kind of free is you kind of have to manage the influx of, of new users and especially in a way that relates to quality. Um, so very early on, we put in a, an invite-only system. Actually, for the first year, Designer News was an invite-only system. Uh, that worked pretty well for us to kind of maintain this very, very high bar of quality that we hold ourselves to. Um, and Invite systems are very strange things, especially for, uh, for free things out there. It builds a lot of uh, artificial uh, scarcity, which then drives up the demand. So you have all these people talking about this thing on, on Twitter and the social networks and so forth. Um, it seems to be something that a lot of people do these days. Uh, but uh, we, were, it, it, we employed it. It worked well for us. And it also helped our very small team kind of manage this influx of users. It also helped present a, prevent that like huge spike of initial interest, and then just that uh, that trough of sadness um, that a few people call when you know the launch is done or this thing's out, and now everyone's on to the next thing. Um, so by building in this artificial constraint that not everyone who wants to sign up can, uh, it really helped us, I guess, smooth out that ramp quite a bit. Um, and most of all, this also helped us keep quality high. Um, if you've read the site recently, you've probably, I mean, there are a lot of people out there that say, designer news, it's not as good as it used to be. Well, nothing was ever good as it used to be, but things change uh, and things grow up. Uh, but at the same time, the questions for us are, are a lot different. Uh, when we had a community of 100 designers, uh, 
what quality looked like then looks a lot different than when you have 200,000 people checking your site. Um, especially 200,000 people who are very, very particular about every single pixel on the site. Um, so it's not an easy audience to please, but we, we do our best and we're always thinking of it. Um, running a community online is, is extremely difficult. It's, it's like difficult in the, in sometimes the ways where you just, uh, you're, you doubt whether humanity as a whole is a, is a good endeavor or not. Um, <laughs> and if you spend any time on, on, uh, on a forum or reading YouTube comments, I'm sorry. Uh, and it's a very, very difficult thing to actually encourage polite and professional discourse online. Uh, and we're still working on the best ways to go about that. Uh, some of the things that we've found to work the best for us, though, uh, is instituting a policy for real names. Um, a lot of social networks, uh, or people are, are, tend to be pretty divided on whether a real name should be required on social networks or not. Uh, for ours specifically, uh, they're required because we like to think of ours as a professional social network. Um, and you shouldn't be able to essentially hide behind uh, a pseudonym while you're uh, crapping all over someone, someone's work. Um, so that's a, that's a policy that we established pretty early on and we, we've stuck to it. Also, when your name and like your job title are associated with like some slanderous comment, uh, you, look, you tend to look pretty bad, especially as like the designer news SEO machine kicks in and the first thing for your name plus the word designer is you being a very rude person online. Um, so all of, these, all of these things have kind of like helped uh, help keep things together as, as, uh, as we've grown. Uh, we also were very, very conscious about setting the tone very, very early on uh, with this phrase, be nice or else, um, which isn't a very nice phrase at all. Uh, and by setting this tone that, you know, this is, this is a place that we want to be good and a, a place that we want to be good for a very long time, uh, we instilled that behavior in all of the early users uh, who then took it upon themselves to also instill that upon everyone else uh, as they came into the system. So right now, Designer News is actually very largely self-policing. Uh, it's one of the only communities online that I've seen where if you are a rude person, uh, someone will tell you you're being rude and how you're being rude in a very respectful way. Um, and everyone else will kind of rally behind that person. It's a very, very nice thing to say. Um, but it's not perfect, and there are people who uh, take, take joy out of, I guess, poisoning the well, as it were. So we, we did borrow this, borrow this idea uh, from a few other folks. It's known as hell banning or shadow banning. Um, and it's, it's, I think, the only appropriate response to people who are, are being very rude. Um, what it is, is rather than just being uh, banned or having your account deleted on, a, on an online community, uh, you become shadow banned or you become hell banned. Uh, so you are still able to post, still able to comment on things. It's just that no one else out there will see your posts or your comments. Um, so it's the, it's the equivalent of screaming into a pillow um, or running a Twitter account if you have zero followers, I don't know. Um, but we took it one step further. So now we actually have, uh, have what we call uh, the ring of hell. So everyone who's hell banned on designer news is, is banished to hell and only the other people, and they can see the normal stuff. <laughs> But they can also see all of the other people in hell. <laughs> and so the next time you see someone complaining about designer news, or the next time you see, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, someone complaining about designer news online, uh, we always check, uh, like, is this person in hell or not? Uh, nine times out of ten, it's like, yes, this person is in hell, and they are, like, they're having conversations with spammers, bots. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a terrible place, and it's, but it's good, uh, good comedic relief. Um, and so that's, that's one way that we came up with, uh, uh, I, I guess, kind of building, building a community that, that uh, can kind of moderate itself. That last one, though, is a little, a little over the line, I'll, I'll admit. Um, and then the, the, the last thing that, that we kind of did here was, uh, um, so every social network, right, you have to upload a photo of you on a hike, 
um, with a nice cover photo of like the mountains in the background. Uh, every social network requires you to upload a photo and a cover photo. Uh, but we didn't want to just be that. And we had a very particular aesthetic. Um, and we had a very particular audience, too. I mean, like the people who read designer news are some of the most talented people I've ever met online, uh, or in person for that matter. Um, and so we decided to introduce this idea of these pixel avatars. So if you've ever uh, played like a, a Super Nintendo game, uh, or even a Nintendo game, probably a Nintendo game, um, everything is very pixelated, everything's very blocky, there's a certain like aesthetic to it that a lot of, uh, a lot of great artists like Eboy uh, and others are, are kind of reviving as a nod to this. Um, and so in a way, and it feels old saying this, like, like pixel art is a retro thing now. This is, this is what the world's come to. Um, and so the way you create an avatar, the thing that represents you as a person on Designer News, is by using this pixel avatar creator. Um, what it is is a 20 by 20 grid. Uh, you get two colors, white and black, uh, and it is the most frustrating UI you've ever dealt with. It's, uh, it's like using Microsoft Paint if you can only change one pixel at a time, uh, and you have to click to change the pixels. Um, and at the end of the day, there's very little payoff. Like, it's a tiny little badge next to your name. Like, uh, we're all grown adults. We probably have better things to do with our time. Um, and we came out with this, uh, and then like one of the most amazing things is that people just took it and really, really ran with it. So this is uh, uh, when I when I originally put this talk together, it was this might have been one twentieth of all of them. This is probably closer to one one hundredth, if, if even that. Um, the amount of creativity and the amount that. Uh, very talented people can do with certain constraints is fascinating. Um, you also notice that uh, some of these people have different colors in their avatar, uh, more than just black or white. So we, we started building in reward mechanisms uh, to Designer News to reward the best people in the community. And so as you, uh, as you accumulate karma, uh, you get new, new colors available to your account. Um, everyone with an orange has, was around on Designer News for the first year. Um, and then we also give out uh, colors to anyone that shows up to uh, our meetups that we put on. And uh, I think it was at uh, a meetup that we did during Brooklyn Beta the other, the other year. There, were, there was a group of people that showed up like literally as we were closing the venue down, uh, panting for breath. And they said, I'm here. Do I still get my color? Um, and it's like, yes, of course. You <laughs> took an Uber across town. We will give you uh, whatever hex value we were, we were giving out that day. Um, took it a step further, introduced uh, cover photos. So now you can have pixel cover art photos. Uh, these are just a few of them that people have uh, put together. Um, you can see that Sasha Grief down there says he's spending way, way too much time on this thing. Um, by the way, you thought like 20 by 20 was a pain to deal with. I think this is 1,000 by 600 like individual pixels that you have to click. Uh, so each, sing and, and the colors cycle, like you don't get to like choose a paintbrush. To get orange, you have to click four times. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're <laughs> so. Um, that's a talk. Uh, th so those are just those are just some of some of the things that we've done uh, over the over the past uh, two years uh, to really keep uh, keep designer news a place that is both I guess professional but also lighthearted at the same time uh, and kind of and a good place to I guess retire to or check in between coffees or or check in between meetings. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, my name was Kelly Sutton. Uh, we got time for questions. Yeah. How do you get out of the circle of hell? Uh, there's a panel of judges that sits up in the clouds. Um, <laughs> send, send me an email. Yeah, just have them send me an email. Yeah. <laughs> what about monetization? Like, what uh, we can send you there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we put a little box feeling 
Uh, so the question, so designer news follows very much the typical structure that you see like most social networks follow, which is you have the, uh, or even things that aren't quite social networks like Wikipedia, uh, you have a small number of users that contribute a vast majority of the content. Um, like you're, you're talking like for a site our size, maybe like about a thousand people, a thousand individuals will be, will be posting the most popular stories every day. Um, so it kind of goes. It kind of actually goes back to your talk, where you have this idea of, of there are different levels or different types of users, right? So you need to build. I should probably stop facing that way. Uh, you need to build. Uh, you need to build tools and experiences for uh, the power user that likes to submit a lot of stories. You need to make sure the commenting uh, uh, commenting experience is solid for the guy that, the, for the guys that write more than five thousand comments. Uh, and then you also need to make sure that the reading experience for the casual visitor, the one, uh, those without accounts, uh, can still have a, a, a good time. Thank you very much. Cool.